Cindy. Cindy, how are Cindy you? Cindy, father. Yes, yes, mm. Cindy. Yes. And Stacy. And Stacy. Yes, Stacy. Yes, Stacy. Yes, Stacy. Well, you're looking, you're looking great. Now. You're looking great. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Cindy and Stacy, we worked with Nelly together. Oh, yes. We worked with her in Dublin in La Pelos. Would, would I be right in saying you, you all have implants? No, no, father, they're natural. Oh, they're natural. <laughs> father. I find the implants, you know, the implants really they save you if you're drowning anyway, you know. Yeah, they keep you up. Not a cock. Right, come from another use, they're not a cast. They keep you up. Well, I suppose with something enormous with the marriage again.
good, e- good evening. Good evening. Uh, first of all, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good. And we'll ask you all for a little bit of silence. It's only going to take a half an hour. <laughs> and I suppose I was going to talk about myself, but today really is Ned and Nettie's day. No, no. Please, 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 please. It's their, it's their day. It's their day, and we're only here. We're only here as witnesses to, to witness their marriage and to and, and to wish the boys to see what's coming now. <laughs> Hold on. A big turnout welcome for Bishop John Desmond II. I'm here as an observer for this. I know, and I'm sorry for barging in on this, I'm from the cathedral. Brian, Father Brian, you will have to conduct this in a better state now. Now this thing, what's this? What's this? Clean that off. Get that off. It's a shaman, it's a shaman rash, your lordship. A shaman rash. Just, just, I have been set down from the holy see. We hear your last parish was a disaster. You are not going to let this happen here. Let's be quite clear. I am sorry to the bride and groom. We're not just going to make sure this ceremony. Put a bit of behavior on these people. Put, put behavior on the people. I, 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 I totally agree with you, Your Lordship. And I'm going to, I'm going to try to conduct this in a more, in a more mannerly, in a more mannerly fashion. And I'll ask, I'll ask, I'll ask you here. Please, please keep quiet. Please. The bishop is here and he's not happy. I'm going, I'm going to wish the bride and groom and their families a fantastic day if you have it. But observe the rules of the church and don't start to behave in the house of God like animals. And you, Father, what sort of, what sort of food are you eating? How dare you disagree the altar of the Lord? How dare you? Behave yourself. Do a bit of running in the morning. Do a bit of cycling. Do something. Anything. Do not desecrate the house of the Lord. Continue with the ceremony. Thank you, your Lord. And I take everything on board that you said. And hope that things will go a lot better from now on. Look at your lordship. Is there a place for the bishop to sit? The bishop can sit. Of course, of course. Of course. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> Continue. Now, we have to ask, we we'll start again in the name of the Father. Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you and also with you. Amen. People of Kiltorrit, my name is Father Brian Shorty. And I am, this is, I am into my six, six or seven days in this parish. And for the few Short days I've been in the parish. I've been met with nothing but shake hands and welcome your father. And I feel a happiness in my mind that I'm going to have a great time here in this parish. Now, I brought with me from the last parish my housekeeper and my friend. And I'd like to introduce her to you tonight. 
Miss Patty Brown. She's really a, a housekeeper and, and a friend, a, a, per, a companion, someone, and a warm person, a warm person that keeps me, you, you, it keeps you feeling happy. But we didn't come here today to talk about Fanny Brown. No. A subject which is that wasn't talked of when I was a young boy. But it seems to be on everybody's lips now. And that is sex. Sex. The Channel 4, the TV, the British channels, the sex is in everyone's sitting room. Sexy handbags. <laughs> sexy stockings. Sexy underwear. Sex in the city. <laughs> sex extra. Sex extra. <laughs> Desperate housewives. Footballers' wives. Sex. Sex on the brain. And, isn't it? The last parish that I was in, I met two bachelor men, two decent men. And I asked them, I asked them why would they have, did they intend to marry or settle down. And wasn't it strange? The answer I got from one of them was, he said, Father, Father, I would, would, would love to settle down. Love to get a wife. And Father, he said, I could get a wife, but I'm afraid. And I said, What are you afraid of? I'm afraid of the sex. And he went on to explain to me that when he watches sex on the TV, well, where the man comes in from work with his briefcase. And his bride, his bride has the dinner on the table. She has the low cut dress. The candles are on the table and the signals are there. And before the dinner starts, they're at it. Up on the table, the bottle of sauce, the teapot is all pushed down. And all in the name of love. And if, if that happened long ago, where we all lived in small houses, and when the daughter brought in a man, a man, an Abram man and married, and her crying out, crying out, as if in pain, like the donkey in the feed. <sighs> Imagine your mother, our father getting out of bed 20 years ago and hearing them cries. They would sin for help. If it was no, no doctor would be at the house every night. Well, that is the way we are in Ireland today. And I suppose, really, I'm not going to bore you. I didn't come, I don't want to. I hope my sermon hasn't put Ned and Nelly off enjoying their big day. But I'm sure the bishop. The bishop will agree with me that it had to be said. Great Father Brian, give that man a round of applause. My dear people of Kitorna, Nelly, Nelly and Ned, everything is planned, everyone helps. But the one thing, the little thing, it's precious to Nelly and Ned, and to every couple, is the honeymoon. And the honeymoon, my friends, is something secret. That you don't know where they're going on the honeymoon, they don't tell you. Sometimes, sometimes the groom surprises the bride with the location. Sometimes 
the bride surprises the groom. So when we think of honeymoon, we think of honey. And we think of the bees. And then we think of the beehive. So tonight, my friends, Nelly will wait in the beehive on her throne. Waiting for Ned. And Ned, Ned my, will enter the beehive and buzz round and he will sting his bride. Not, not, not my friends, not my friend, not, she's not my friends in a hurtful manner, in a loving way, a loving sting. And unlike the common bee who stings once and dies, <laughs> we hope that Ned, after he sting, it will set him back. But he will rise to sting again for many, many times again. where we're going to ask Ned and Nelly to come to the altar. We're calling Ned and Nelly to come to the altar here, along with their bridesmaids. Now please, a little bit of cuteness again now please. A uh, question I'm compelled to ask at the start of any marriage. I know it, it, won't, it won't affect, I, 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 it, I have never had a problem, but I have to ask, Ned first. Does anyone in this church, this glorious evening, object to the marriage of Ned Stone Winters and Annie Goldthink Summers? <laughs> and if they do, speak now or forever hold your peace. Years ago, 
smaller point behind the nose of the feet. What about it? Get that dead foot feather. Put an appy on that child. Put an appy on that child. Get him off of here. Get him off of the house of God. Baptize him. Baptize him. Baptize him, Pat. Come on, Francie. Come on with the water. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Get it out. Get it down now. Stand to your right. I, I baptize you. Waski, Ned Stones Winters. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Put, put your maturity on this, Nelly. 
I don't taste a, a peace and a quietness who came over the valley of Ruin. It was accepted that Ned Stone Winters would not be joining his 39 comrades. But on day nine, by the hand of God, and Mrs. Quehan <laughs> was out searching at her sheep, watching for sheep that were lambing. Every man in the ring that was in the pub, and she was up on the mountain. And dust was falling, and she heard a tapping noise. A tapping noise. And she went back with her lamp, and a hand came through the mountain with two black balls in it. And it was next to her methods. When his pick and shovel had dug himself to rock and broke through the crystal soil in Aredna. And the news filtered to the drum shambo and drum kirn and the rejoicing started. And Ned, Ned was carried shoulder high. And the people of Aredna, they drank and carried Ned. And Ned played the moron in Flynn's and my friends, for nine days, for every day, he was trapped on the ground. And to this day, to this day in Arigna, he's a legend, a hero, and he's known all over Ireland as the man from Arigna with the black boards. Now Nelly. Nelly has asked me to bless, to bless her gifts. Nelly brings with her, Nelly brings with, with her, Nelly, a dancing pole. I haven't seen one of them before. But we bless, hold that, any other, she has, I see, oh, I have some medals in here. Nelly, medals she won as a step dancer at the Toast Lindham Chamber when she was under seven. Her medals from the convent where she's been five years with the Sisters of the Broken Hearted. What's that? What's that? What's that? Uh, hold on, hold on. Francie, the bishop told me it's a town. Well, we'll bless this town anyway, whatever we're supposed to cover. And she brought a teapot. She is now a first class cook, and we hope many a hot pot for she'll make for Ned for many years to come. A round of applause for Ned. <laughs> now we come to we come to the near the conclusion of the night where we ask the bride and groom to exchange their vows. So I call on Ned. And Nelly, to stand up, please. First, I call on Ned. Ned Stones Winters. Have you came here of your own free will and without compulsion to marry this woman? <laughs> compulsion. Is there any impediment? Of oh, why you should marry that this one. Are you under any? <laughs> Your mother said to go ahead. So you're prepared to go ahead. So. You say. 
We get the rings and less. Is the rings here? No, first of all, you say after me. First of all, I say after you. No. 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 Listen, Ned, you're, you're nervous. Listen, Ned, you're nervous. You say. Ned. You say, I, Ned. You say, I, Ned. No, no. no. You say, you, you say it. You say it. Yeah. You say, I need take you, Nelly. I say, you need take <laughs> you. No, 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 no. You come up here, Nelly. Come up here, you. Nelly hit me. Nelly hit me. You say, you say, I need. Tell him, Mammy. You say, I need. Oh. <laughs> I need. No, I I need. I. You say. I need stones. I need stones. Yes. And you say I need stones. You say I need stones. You say. No, you say. Well, I say. I'm not marrying her. You are marrying her. You are marrying her. I need stones. I need stones. Take you. Take me. Take you. Oh. Yes. Yes, Nelly. How would Nelly take you? How would Nelly take you? No. You say. I, I. You say what I tell you. Say I need stones. Take you, Nelly. I need stones. I marry you, Nelly. For better or worse. Oh, you're 
ring off. Hold on till I get the ring off. Hold on. Now Nelly, say after me. No, it's not you. Nelly. Nelly, say after me. Stop shaking it. I Nelly, good thing. I Nelly, good thing. S Summers. Summers. No, what do you say? Where this ring? Ned. Where? Stones, winters. Where this ring? Where this ring? As a sign of our love and fidelity. As a sign of our love and fidelity. Forever and ever, amen. Forever and ever, amen. And I kiss the bride. Now, now you can say to yourselves, Ned and Nelly is coming with me to the sacristy to do what this. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, finally, you all to stand up and give a big rose and reception for Ned and Nelly. I have one more here now, I'm not rightly sure where to come out of. 
Jesus, the peace seem to appear here, but it says, it's a rhyme for you. It's roses are red, violets are blue. Ned, please don't get married. I still love you. <laughs> Jesus, I don't think I was supposed to read that one out. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, sorry, Jason, make a better give you one. I have another one here to, to Ned and Nelly. Congrats on your big day from all the publicans of the parish, McNamaz, McCone, Scotties, Cardis and McMurphy's. He just give us at least one night a week each, anyway. <laughs> to Ned and Nelly, best wishes today and always. May all your troubles be little ones, Barrick and Michelle Obama. To Ned and Nelly, congrats on your big day. Once you go green, you never go back. Councillor Francie Gilmark from the Green. Or should I say altar boy? From the Green, save our forestry party. And the last one here, I think. To Ned and Nelly, congrats on your big day. All us in the lookout for the people to get over. Councillor Jerry Rose. <laughs> well, we'll keep things moving along here anyway, and I hope everyone gets a good tap of a feed and you all got a good feed down below. On behalf of the Summers family, we hope we're going to eat well anyway because they're paying for it. <laughs> uh, and now we're going to call on the father of the bride to say a few words. Alphonsus Summers. <laughs> Reverend fathers, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a man of few words, so I'm not going to speak too long here tonight. I'd just like to say a few brief words about Nelly. She was the apple of her eye growing up. She came out, she helped us on the farm. She cleaned out buyers. When we couldn't get the calves sucking, she put her finger into the mouth. And it was a way of getting them onto the cow. As she went on, she got very good at her dancing. She won the under seven slip jig at Antos and in Drumshambo. She was very bright at school. I just have to stay at that. She was always very good at making jigsaws. She could make a jigsaw in about a month, and on the box it used to say, for two to four years. <laughs> then she progressed, and she went to the convent. We were heartbroken, but delighted. Things didn't just go that well in the convent, and she left it, and she went back to her dancing. Now, I don't know that much about dancing myself, but I went from slip jigs to horn pipes. <laughs> went from horn pipes to Kerry, from Kerry to set dancing. Then the new river dance came in, but she went a step further lap dancing. I'm not too familiar what lap dancing is, but I know it's something got to do with GAA and you run around the field doing laps or something, dancing. Something, she said something about a pose, or a pose, so it must be the goal for us. So, with no, no further ado, I'll hand you back to the best man and enjoy your night. Thank you very much, Alphonsus. Next man up is my own father, Packy Winters, and he might say a few words here. Yeah. All right, Daddy, and Nathan. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I lost him up because I'm close to Nelly. My hip is that big. Stop, 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 stop. stop. <laughs> anyway, your, uh, your, your honour, fathers, ladies and gentlemen, you're all very welcome here. Just, uh, Actually, a very emotional day for myself and my wife, Margaret. Is, this is uh, Ned is our youngest of nine, and uh, we're finally on our own, I mean, so we'll probably be doing little things that we didn't do before because there was nobody there. 
Is that right, Mummy? No, oh, Mummy gets very emotional when I talk about these things. Like, she has all our bits and pieces, but I don't know whether they're all moving or not. Are they, Mummy? No, it's not. No, no. So we're not going to have it here anyway. Anyway, just to move along, um, you're all very, very welcome here tonight and on this uh, wedding occasion, I suppose you could say. And um, Ned comes from a very, very humble background. You know, I mean, as you heard earlier on by Reverend in his sermon, he was talking about uh, in the mines. Yes. Ned goes down very low all the time, and he likes borrowing. He likes actually going down quite low with his back balls. As you can see, he's eating his dinner at the moment. Ned, will you play the pinch to your dad, please? No, he's not. He's going either way. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ned goes down underground all the time. So he likes it. Okay, Mum. Yeah, Mum is just emotional again, but she's okay. Anyway, uh, we're very excited about this day because, uh, as you know, we, Ned comes from a very, very humble background and uh, he's, he's actually married some money. So we believe now that... Married Mummy, yeah. We believe now in our retirement that Ned will be able to look after us in a good nursing home. He has told us this already. So we are expecting to be well looked after in a good nursing home. So we thank uh, Nelly, you know what I mean, for all the, the money that's going to come towards us in our retirement. And uh, as for Ned, Ned, you know, as you, as you may have noticed, he hasn't grown very much. <laughs> a, no, a number of reasons, a, no, a number, a number of, sorry, mommy, uh, is there a problem here? Is there? No, no, no. I think at this late stage, mum might be right to go around the father or not. But, we're not, we're not going to do that now. But anyway, Mum, as we couldn't have a lot of money, he wore the one baby grow for years for a start, so his feet is quite cramped. So as he, as if you look at him dancing probably around tonight, you can see he can't move his two feet together. <laughs> Solely because of his body grow was a little tight. So any young mothers down there, cut the feet off them before you put them into it. Um, he was breastfed. So just just a word just a word for the bride. He likes like a bit of breast now and again. Actually, that's breast quite often. So um, not like mum. Well, yeah, yeah. He took a very long time for the half the breast. So he's fine now. He's fine now. So anyway, I'm not holding you along because it's a very light, entertaining night. So I want to thank you all for coming for Ned and Nelly's and um, let all their ups and downs be in the bedroom. So good night. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nelly. We'd now we'd like to call on Sister Ray Fidelma from the St. Bernard Church of the Broken Hearts, all the way from the Philippines. Sister Mary Fidelma. Give a big round of applause. She's left the south and about eight and a half thousand miles to be here today. Oh, God bless you all, the poor little creatures. First of all, I I'd like to apologise this evening for my hairy legs, but his lordship was leaving out of the bedroom this morning and he brought my razor with him. Oh, was he supposed to say that? Now, as you all may know, Nelly here and myself were in the Sisters of the Broken Hearted for five long years. And believe you me, she did break our hearts. We used to call her Nelly Long Pockets because she claimed everything. The church connection, donations, anything. In fact, she robbed that much, we should have been called the Poor Clares. Now, I always knew at one stage that Nelly would stray away from the vocation. And I think the giveaway was the pin-up poster of Daniel O'Donnell with speedos on it. <laughs> but that's not to mention the poster of Big Tom. But that's too explicit so we won't go there. Now, since she met Ted, or since she met Ned, <laughs> Jim, no, Ned, 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 Ned. She spends an awful lot of her time on her knees, and I don't think it's praying somehow. <laughs> but I could never figure out what she's seen in Ned. I have a feeling it was the shiny blue Fords and Dexter he had parked outside of Flynn's of Arigna. 
So if there's one bit of advice I can give Ned this evening is treat her gently, slow through the gears, look after her and she lasts for years. The whole array from the Philippines. We now would like to just have a little word from the other side. We don't hold them that well, but we were told that we have to give them their day in the sun as well. So, one of our bridesmaids is going to say a few words. Fanda Cock. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> and for those down the back, my name is Fonda. Fonda Cox. <laughs> and myself, Nelly, and Lotta were together in Club Lapello. <laughs> and that's situated on 55 Dame Street, Dublin 2. It's Dublin's longest established gentleman's club. Full bar and exclusive private areas. We're open seven nights a week. Open until late. We were always considered the trio. Nelly, Fonda Cox and Lotta and Gina. And we were considered to be the most beautiful girls from around the world. But we're now a duo. Because Nelly is gone to Ned and we're surprised, shocked, that she has picked him. But if the need ever be Nelly and you ever need to earn anything again, come back to Club Lapello, 55 Dame Street, Dublin 2, Dublin's longest established gentleman's club. And there's so many familiar faces down there. So many. So many familiar faces. Look. <laughs> so remember, guys, be it a stag or just an ordinary night out, Club Lapello, 55 Dane Street, Dublin 2. Thank you. Good luck, Nelly and Ned. Thank you very much, Panda, but we got to think a lot of it went above our head. And now I want to call on one of the younger books. We come from a family of 19 and a half, so one of the younger books here was giving me a handout today, and I'm going to ask him now, Dick Winters, to say a few words. How about Dick? Thank you very much, Dick. Oh, by the way, I see you, huh? I remember you. You're all right, there we are, don't get up. Now I'd like to thank Mick. As you see, uh, Mick and Nate are a bit better, better well fed than myself. <laughs> Mammy and Daddy didn't take that much good care of me. But I'd like to welcome Reverend Father Short, Archbishop Desmond Tutu here. <laughs> Gentlemen, women, kids, hairy babies, nappy full, whatever. Welcome here. Now, as you know, Ned is my biggest, eldest brother, and I love him dearly. I love you, Ned. I think I love you. <laughs> and Ned was a dinger on the Bowron. And the Bowron he played. But when me and Mick were young, we didn't know what the fucking Bowron was. And Ned used to say to us, I'm going up to my room to play the Bowron. <laughs> I'm going up to my room to play the Bowron, he'd say. So sure enough, me and Mick could be in the room, and all we heard from the room was... <laughs> and Mick used to look at me, as he a woman up there? And I said, he might, you know. <laughs> this went on for a month or two. That was sound, and he used to say, another week or two passed, I'm going up to the room to play the bower on, you know. And sure enough, you did. And he came down one day in front of me and Ned, and he goes, we didn't know what the bow run was, and he goes, I want to play the bow run in front of you. By jeez, we weren't long leaving that fucking house. <laughs> oh my God. It was a big part of Ned's career, I would say that. He was a coal miner, 
as Father Shore pointed out, he was uh, the last of 40 to be rescued. But not many know about the cold winter of night in 1974, when the bowed Ned was called on, there was five struck on the Arigna mines. And he was called on at pace. And there he was, Ned, Ned, get up, there's five struck. And sure enough, Ned got up as brave as he is. Oh, jeez, he's a good lad. He got up and ran for the mines. Halfway through, though, Ned copped on. He was only wearing a pair of socks and a hat. <laughs> but he ploughed into the mines and the five of them struck. Sure enough, some of them wanted to stay when you saw that. <laughs> and he had to bring them all out in the one go. Two on the shoulders, two under the arms, We'll not say where the other one was hanging out of the building, huh? That man blew the short strong hand in, huh? Huh? Yeah. And we'll not say who that was. Will we, John James, huh? We'll not say who that was. You're all right, there we are, look it up, you're all right. You're all right, you're all right, you're all right. Go ahead, man, that man got a raw deed that day. But only for me, you wouldn't be here. You bring it about the harsh <laughs> Well, that's my big brother, Ned, and I love him dearly. I love him. And Mick, even though you give me more wages when we're in school. But anyway, I want to say to Nelly and the bridesmaids, you look absolutely beautiful, especially you, Jesus. My God, you. No, she's mine, she's mine. Room 912. No, no, that's paper. No, no, not yet, let her. Sit down, will you, for the love of God. And I want to say Nelly especially, you even shaved your legs for the occasion. You look absolutely fantastic. And I wish you well in the future and you make beautiful babies, seeing as you've fucking met them with 12 other women in the parish. And, women make them with, uh, and speaking of babies, I know babies are supposed to be cute, but what was the hairy yoke doing here? That guinea It was like Pat Mustard at Barto. I'd like to hand you back over to my big brother, Mick, now. Thanks very much, Mick. Good man, Mick. We're now going to hand you over to the man of the moment and the man we all lo look up to. Well, when we're on the floor, we look up to him. <laughs> but, my big brother, Ned, and he's going to say a few words here. Come in, Ned. Ladies and gentlemen, my father and sister for welcoming me all here tonight on the occasion of the wedding of myself and Nelly. Nelly is such a lovely girl. Back in the early 70s, in the Mayflower and Shambo, Larry Cunningham and the Mighty Havens were playing it. And I was in it the same night and it was packed out. And the play, I saw an old time waltz, lovely litter. Now Larry said, Larry said this was a lady's choice. So. Me coming from the mountain, I didn't know what a lady's choice was. But anyways, I seen the lassies going over to act and all the feathers. And I seen this girl coming across the map to the floor of the flower. So was great tipping her ship and uh, she wasn't seeing kind of cock or cream. She was flying. She came over and she said, will you dance her? And I said, I will. Dancing round the hall and she said, are you local or are you a stranger? I said, I'm local enough. I come from a ring that away up on the mountain, a place called the Young Bush. So I danced away and I asked her where did she come from and she said she was from a Hakash. And I knew a Hakash, I knew a Hakash well because my mother, God bless her, came from that part of the country. And Jackie Lenny or Jackie Lee and all the people out there. So we danced away and he was and I asked I asked her for, I asked Nelly if I was her name and she told me she was Nelly quoting uh, uh, summer. So she said to me, Nelly, she says, I'd love to take you out for a night. Well now I said, Nelly, and all the girls that I had in my time, I had to take them out. But you were the first girl that ever took me out. So I went out with Daddy and uh, we went to a pub and we went to a dance and came home to Nelly's house that night. 
and we had the meal and they got to the Nahu Nay for Tundra Lighten and I had nothing on it at Tam Radi Boys. A good tire on the front wall, a bad tire on the back, or a rope uh, like a hay in the back tire tied to keep it up. And I was, Ned said to me, she said, Ned, I wouldn't go home tonight if I were you. Well, I said, I don't know, Ned, if I should I do. It was an awful night for Tundra Lighten and it was quite mighty. Yeah, he said, stay, so I said, I won't stay. Well, you could, well, I raised it up, she was like a duck on water with a smile on her face, so she was. <laughs> so I went to bed, and he went, and he went to the drawing room, and I went to the tap room. And at 4 o'clock in the morning, I waited, and I could hear this snow at oh, hour, because you could hear it blowing in the chandler. Peter Lord, I didn't wait it. She put the paper to the water snow, then it is. So the next morning then we had breakfast and Nelly was a gay cook and she, she had boxy for breakfast and rasher and sausages. And you could hear her there after being anointed. She was a she, she was a she was a gay cook, so we said and chatted and she said, Ned, would you would you marry me? Oh because I said I will. So that was it. Here's myself and Nelly, um, husband and wife this evening. No, so now on behalf of Nelly, myself and Nelly, I want to thank you all for coming here tonight and for my father and mother who done a great job down to the years bring me up, I say thank you. And to Nelly's mother and father, for the lovely daughter, Nelly, I say thank you. So, I want you all to enjoy tonight, and for Nelly, Nelly is the love of my life. So Nelly, enjoy your night tonight, because you're heading for the written amount to our mom. Thank you all very much. We always look up to Ned because everything that Ned does, we normally follow. Well, it's too I uh, forgot to mention the two best men here on my left, my two brothers, who do never have me. Two, two wise men who do a great job. Who want to give them a round of applause, please. Thank you very much. My name. Well, uh, not a whole lot to say, but I suppose for people to talk a little bit about our family, because I heard enough about lap dances and all sorts of stuff that I never heard hell of in my life before. So I'll give you a little bit of background of our family. And there's 18 of us in it. And Mammy and Daddy reared 18 of us. The family was so big with only one table and you had to be seven or eight before you got a seat at the table. There's a lot of us in this, there's four sets of twins. There's Barry, Gary, Harry and Larry. Then there's the three twins, Mick, Bree and Dee. And then there's a half a dozen away then abroad. But we are all trying to hold it a bit together as best we can. We, we were so poor growing up. So when we went to the Acres Lake and the Shamber to throw a lock of crumbs to the ducks, they often threw it back at us. And there was another thing then, the teacher says, I want you to put the word beautiful into a sentence. This is uh, beautiful, beautiful, yeah, it was beautiful. So a little maid in the front of the thing, the front of the class, and she says, Please, miss, she says, My mummy was going to a wedding one day, and she had a beautiful dress on her, and I have to say she looked beautiful. Oh, this is very good, very good, very good. Frankie came up next to me, he says, Please, miss, please, miss. One day we went down to the beach below in Strand Hill, and we were there so long, that when we were leaving, the sun was setting down, and it was absolutely beautiful. So we just need was asked anyway to put the word is beautiful. He says, our eldest, Mary, Mary Agnes, was away for about five years, and she came back from Dublin, seven months pregnant, and then he stood the door and he says, beautiful, fucking beautiful. <laughs> Ned was 
The teacher was explaining no hadn't and subtracting. She says, uh, how will they get this through? She says, if there was three birds sitting on a wall, and the farmer came over and shot one of them, and he was left. I'll be just there in the front seat again. Please, mister, with two left. Very good, very good. Frankie was over and he said, please, mister, with two left. The boy Ned says, there was none left. She says, what do you mean there was none left? I says, Ned, with the noise that shot at the gun, the dog flew away. She says, no, I should think explain to him when Ned insisted, but she says, I like the way you were thinking. Ned went home that day very, very disgusted about how he was reprimanded. He told Daddy, but Daddy told her, told Ned, when you go back in the morning, I'll tell you what you tell the teacher. Now, because the Ned was in the next morning at about half eight, and the teacher was cleaning out the ashes. Now, Jesse never was there in his life. He's busy, he's busy, he's busy, one for yours. If there's three women walking down the street, one of them is eating a lolly, one of them is licking a lolly, one of them is sucking a lolly, which of them is married? The teacher says, I know which one was married, but no, I suppose the one that he saw for the lolly. No, I said, the one that ring the finger, but like the way you were thinking. And I was going to call on the bride and groom to cut the cake. If you want to get a photo of this, it's a kind of a once in a lifetime you'll ever see. You can get, get along with your cameras and get a photo of Ned and Nelly cutting the cake. And he said, would I be right in saying you're, a honey, you're on your honeymoon? 
We are. That's what our analysis is all running on. He said, would you like to bribe it? Not the bride. Would you like the bride? He said. What? Sit there me at the bride. He said, the bride is free tonight. I want no bride, he says. I put no bride on her. I'll hold her by the ears, he said. She says, well, I guess you should be the night is on it. But uh, anyway, today is not about today's. Today is Ned and Nelly's day. And we are here to celebrate it. And of course, of course, it was a strange wedding. And a lot of things came out of the open. And I will confess, and I, I, it's troubling my conscience too. And it concerns, it concerns my housekeeper, Fanny Brown. We're three years together, and, uh, and she's, as I said earlier on, she's a housekeeper and a friend, and a very good friend. Sit down, Fanny, sit down, Fanny, sit down, Fanny, you're controlling But, during, during the, when Nelly, when, when, when Fanny used to be hovering around the house and making the beds, I would be watching her, and we're all human, and we're all tempted, but I resisted the temptation, and I prayed, but we all remember the cold snap last winter. <laughs> no, you can't picture it. No diesel in the tank. The light, electricity turned off. I was lying in bed, and the moon shining in the window. I was freezing. <laughs> Give it to us. She arrived into the room with two hot water bottles to warm my feet and she put in the water bottles and she was covered and she had a sick dress on and I said Fanny that's a cold night and I said lying at me here we keep warm we keep warm till the cold snap is over well Fanny got into the bed with me and the rest is history I enjoyed that night. Get down. And I never will forget it. Get down. Get down off there. Come over here. Come over here. Get down from that place. You, ya hussy, ya. Stay where you are. Get in here. Get out of here. Get. Let the priest through. Let the priest through. Let the priest through. By the, by the power of destiny me, by the holy sea of Rome, I will now defrock this man. This man has to be defrocked. This, look at this, you hustle. You hustle. Do your duty. Defrock this man. He'd be for one month suspended from his duties. And she will be placed in a convent. You may have defrocked me, but before you sleep tonight, I will have performed another defrocking. Goodbye!
to keep quiet There was something telling me That you more right than me Woman, and I can't wait to get me hands on your land. <laughs> 